Hi, I'm Kevin from Hudson Engineering Services and this is the second video on our project which is the Aston Martin V12 engine from a 2015 Rapid S, it's the AM29. So in the, the teaser video, the engine was still um, still complete. Um, what we've done is we've, we've, we've removed the cylinder heads. The cylinder heads have been dismantled. The cylinder heads have gone through our, our wash for a preliminary clean, and we've been carrying out some inspection. So what we have in front of me here is the, is the valves. Um, we've also, uh, and, the, and the valve swings, other components from the cylinder head are the roller rockers and the hydraulics. With it being a cat ingested engine, there's no guarantee that we can clean all of that debris, if there is any debris in there. If we, we, we can't guarantee that we'll clean it out. So on that basis, we just, we just replace them so they'll be disposed of straight away. But what we have noted is the, um, the cat ingestion was um, on the back cat on a bank so anything um, in those three cylinders cylinders four five and six are probably where the main damage will be looking at the valves camshaft journals um, and the other parts of the top end look in really really good condition i have seen where the the uh, debris goes round and round the engine it does pick up um, and cause issues up there but we, we've not seen anything like that on this engine so we're, we're going to inspect the valves um, the the way we inspect the valves and the guides is we go through and we measure every single valve stem uh, we measure at the top the middle and the bottom and we check for any deviation in size and we do check all the inlets and all the exhaust these are the valves from cylinder number six which looks like it's sustained most of the most of the damage and ingested the majority of the of the debris from from the cat if you look um they're visibly different this is i'll just check and pick another random cylinder that's from another bank that's what you'd expect them to look like um, and they're like so on this you see that that's dry and it's it's completely um discolored on the top the exhaust valves um they all look pretty pretty similar um, which is fine when we've measured the valves what we'll do is we'll ascertain if they're in tolerance we have a manufacturer's um, specified sizes so we'll check them to the book settings um, any valves that are out of tolerance will be disposed of the valves that are in good order um, we can we can re we can reuse so we'll just Inspecting the cylinder heads further, um, been, Alice has completely dismantled them. Uh, valve stem oil seals have been removed, the valves. Um, they've been through our um, first wash process. And they've cooled down, um, just got rid of the uh, residue of oil. Um, and any, any bits of dirt that have on the cylinder head. And what we're going to do now is just go through and check the, the valve guide. So ordinarily when you're checking valve guides, you can put your valve in and move it back in two in each cylinder just to see, um, just to feel what the valve guide plays like. Um, we measure each of the valves. Uh, if the valves are in tolerance, we, we, we recondition those, uh, should they not need to be, we want, not want to replace them. With regards to the measurements in the, in the um, bores of the valve guides, what we do is we have these series of um, they're tungsten carbide pilots and they've been ground absolutely parallel to a, a very specific size. So what we, what we do is we have a, a pilot which is um, just slightly uh, bigger than the valve, just above um, the smallest tolerance. Then we have another pilot which is just at the same size as the largest tolerance in the book. So the smallest size and the, and the biggest size. And when we go through, so as you can see, we'll put the, the first pilot in, which is just slightly above the bottom size. So it's almost exactly sort of stem size, but a little, little bit bigger than the valve. And we 
And we go through each one and we'll just physically, just physically check that they, they feel, they feel nice. Um, but then we'll move on to the larger pilots. Um, now these are what we, yeah, this form of inspection is what we call sort of using go and no go gauges. So um, the, the smaller gauge will go through the bore. The larger gauge, which is just at the upper end of the tolerance, we'll see if that'll fit through the bore. As we can see, this pilot, this tungsten carbide pilot here, won't actually go into those valve guides. So what that tells us is that those guides, although there will be a small amount of wear in that, they've not exceeded the tolerance, so they're not bigger than the larger, larger limit. So each one of those would pass on that occasion and should you find one that is greater in size um, which we may do when we look at the the, the, the cylinder that's had the the, the the cat debris come through because that that, that that adheres itself to the valve and the guide and, and they wear out pretty quickly so we'll pay particular attention to that um, but should we find a couple of guides on a series on the exhaust side for example we would replace um, replace them all on that bank um, without question it's just 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 good practice but these for this test look to be look to be good so this is the cylinder head from a bank this is a um, affected cylinder head from the cat ingestion issue issue um, and we're looking at the valve guides, we're measuring them in exactly the same way as we, we carried out on the, on the, on the V-Bank. Um, this is the larger of the pilots and well, it's just, oh there we go, so that's, that's demonstrating some wear there from the from the in, in ingestion of the cat, and is it going to be the same here? Yeah, so we can quite clearly see that um, the valve guides on these cylinders have sustained wear, um, which is over and above any of the other guides um, in this cylinder head, and also and also B bank. So we will be replacing all the valve guides on the exhaust side of the cylinder head um, and maybe the inlets as well. Uh, well. We'll take a closer look at those also. Moving on to the, onto the bottom end and looking at the cylinder bores and the pistons. Now the cylinder heads have been, been removed. Um, it might be worth noting that on the um, cylinder heads before they were removed, the exhaust port for cylinder number five looked very wet. Um, it was different in the sequence than the than cylinders one to six. Now cylinder number six, that six looks it was sort of dry and sort of um, quite free of carbon in there and that looks that, that, that looked different also than the other cylinders on this bank and also um, B bank. Now what we can see here on cylinder number five is the oil inside the bore. Um, cylinder number six is, is, is completely different again. Now, that's absolutely bone dry. There's, there's no, no oil in there, but the, the particles and the debris from the cat is, is literally all over the cylinder bore. Um, where the exhaust port is here, the exhaust valves come down, the cylinder wall is brushed um, with the ceramic particles um, all the way up and down the cylinder. And the cylinder bore on, um, on the, the rear here is it's literally, it's red like rust. Um, and the cylinder's damaged very, very badly. It'd be interesting to see when we remove the crankshaft and we move the piston just to, just how much damage actually has occurred there because what we found in other engines that have, we've stripped with this, this sort of issue is that the, the piston ring gaps, which should be quite small inside the cylinder, um, have um, 
opened out massively so that, that's a, a, a very clear indication that these huge amount of piston ring wear that's occurred so the next steps will be to remove the crankshaft and we'll remove the pistons and rods and, and, and so on and we'll um, we'll carry out a detailed inspection we have seen on other cat ingested Aston Martin V12 engines that have been run for quite a while that the debris and the contaminant does find its way all the way around the engine and it causes damage to the crankshaft, to the crankshaft journals, all the bearings are completely shot. Um, moving up to the top end, even the camshaft journals are extremely um, pitted and this debris is um, completely um, present throughout the engine which was massively surprising when we first when we first seen that so I hope you can join us for the next video where we'll we'll be carrying out the detailed measurements of the components and what we can do is we'll show you exactly what's worn um, how it's worn and what, what we're going to do next in the in the repair of this Aston Martin engine